Now, here's something to note though. And by the way, quick review, we went over this last session, but these are just two wonderful key commands to understand and know and practice, okay? Is command T to create an audio track and shift command T uh, to create a MIDI track on uh, Macintosh OS. If I right click, I can also insert an audio track or MIDI track any, any in here in this window and also inserting return tracks as well. And, and you'll see the associated uh, key commands for those. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is because technically all of these look the same, right? For the most part, the tracks themselves, but pay attention or <laughs> what, observe. Audio track, audio track, right? Here's the waveforms, okay? Audio tracks, waveforms, clips, okay? W dot A V. But when I click on this clip, Ableton clip, audio clip, hmm, looks a little bit different, right? Okay, what happened here? Why am I seeing this piano roll? And that's what this is representing, by the way, the vertical axis. This is actually uh, a keyboard, okay? If you can if you can kind of imagine that for a moment. Uh, here's your C key, a C sharp, a black notes, and then the white notes. But then you see these little kind of squares, these little dots here, like what is going on? Well, the big difference, okay, is that even though this is audio, I'll go ahead and play it. It's technically coming from a MIDI instrument, okay? So I can't stress that enough. There is a difference. With audio clips, with audio waveforms, you're actually going to see the actual waveform itself. But when it comes to MIDI, what you're looking at here is what's called MIDI. Okay? And if you're wondering how I'm zooming in and zooming out, okay, you can actually just pinch with your mouse. You have this magnifying glass will appear here. Okay, This is the sample display, no editor section. All right, it takes a little while to get used to. So if you're getting frustrated trying to zoom in, zoom out, don't worry, you're not alone, especially if it's your first time doing this. Okay, And when you look at uh, the audio waveforms, you won't see a piano roll because these are actual just audio loops, all right? So what do you use MIDI for? Well, if you want, want to actually play piano in real time, if you actually want to maybe trigger in real time drum samples using something like a drum rack or Ableton's, one of my favorites called the Simpler, which we're going to talk about next, next uh class here but yeah so there is a difference so this is for like launching things in real time and then if you, aka midi and if you want to manipulate audio audio loops um not to say i couldn't launch these because we are in the session view not to confuse the term launching here but uh is one better than the other no okay um i like using both and i think you'll also discover that You'll find some benefits to just using audio loops and you'll find some benefits to just using uh, MIDI clips or MIDI loops. So anyways, we're not going to spend too much time talking about MIDI. I want to get back to audio. But now that I have these three loops in here, okay, I can play them all at once. So I go ahead and come up here and hit play. Maybe turn my shakers down a little bit. Again, I could solo. Maybe just the shakers. And if you hold down the command key, you can solo more than one at a time. Okay. Or use the track activator. Again, kind of getting like just a, a basic mix of these, these tracks. Take advantage of the panning function. Okay, so maybe this drum, my main drum will be dead center. And then maybe my horns will be panned to the left a little bit. Just creating some, you know, some stereo depth here. And then uh, the shaker, I'll pan to the right a little bit. Okay, okay. so I, I have some loops, um, but now I want to record them. I, I, I'm digging them. I want to maybe um, start recording them and start manipulating the, these, these tracks a little bit more. How do I do that? Okay, I'm gonna show you two different ways to go about this, maybe even three, we'll see, we have time. But at least two that are very important to understand and know. Remember, in the session view, what makes the session view a lot of fun is that 
you can definitely launch and manipulate clips in kind of unorthodox ways that's unique to Ableton. And again, if you uh, were taking, if you do decide to take a class with us or sign up for any of our, our classes, which I'll talk about the, again at the end of this, of this segment, um, we definitely dive in to the experimentation parts of Ableton, which is super fun. Part of the reason why I love it so much. But so the first way I wanna show you how to do this from the session view is if I wanted to maybe just play one clip at a time and record it, watch how easy this is. All you have to do is come up here and hit record and then start playing the clips, okay? And when you record them, they will go into what's called the arrangement view. Remember the first key command? If you watched uh, the video from, from our last session, the overview is the tab key, okay? But we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna hit the tab key right yet, right, right away. What I need to do is go ahead and record these clips. So I'm gonna make sure they're all turned off by default. I'm gonna come over here and just double click on my stop button in the session or in the um, the scene view and make sure that's off. Okay. And how I'm gonna start this, I'm gonna start this with the horns. I'm gonna play the horns, and then um, I'm going to introduce the shaker. And then I'm going to introduce the drums. Now, something to point out here, and I know definitely try this yourself, but if you notice that um, something's not right, meaning that you might play something and then it stops playing after a little while, it might be because your loop setting is off. Now, by default, again, if you watched last, the last segment, we talked about how in the preferences you can set your clips to be auto looped. So you don't have to worry about turning this on and off. And I'll talk about it a little bit more, uh, more about this in a moment. But for now, just so you, you're, if you're curious how these clips can just keep playing forever, is because I actually have loop automatically turned on, okay? So here we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit record. And because I have my metronome sound to a count in of one bar, we're gonna hear four clicks and then it's go time. So here we go. Wish me luck. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, you could if you want, but I think we'll be all right. All right, and begin. So I'm gonna let this go at least two times around. And now, shaker. Okay. So we're, we're recording. It might not seem like we're recording. It might be like, how, how are you recording? Like, where is it going, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna let this go a little bit longer and then inevitably I'm gonna stop the recording. But what I'll do is, and it doesn't really matter, you could approach this however you'd like, meaning I could go ahead and hit stop up here and that will stop the recording. The clips will keep playing. Or I could come over here and hit stop. Either or is fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit stop right here on the session, okay? Recording is still recording and that's okay. That's fine, it's not recording anything. So I can come up here and hit stop as well. And now everything is stopped, okay? So where's my recording though? Where did it go, right? The arrangement view. So if I hit tab, here is my recording, okay? This is what you just heard me doing in real time. Now, this is one of the, I don't want to use the word tricky, but one of the things you just need to get used to how Ableton behaves or how live behaves when you're working from the session view into the arrangement view. You'll notice that it's, there's like, it, uh, the clips are kind of grayed out a little bit here. And that's because the session view and the arrangement view are connected in certain ways. Something to understand is that, look, these clips are still here. We can manipulate these further and I'm gonna show you. But what you need to understand is that these clips created a copy. When I performed them, it actually recorded them as a copy in here. So you can almost think of them as, now I have twice the amount of clips. Think of it like that. That's the best way I can kind of describe it. Because these clips are no longer associated with these clips, believe it or not. So if I do any further manipulation to these clips, I still have my 
original copies here. And Ableton does that because look, maybe, maybe I do something to this clip, let's say hypothetically, and I, I feel like I ruin it, quote unquote ruin it, and I, I wish I had the original copy so I could maybe do a new recording. You can come back to it. It's still here, it's still there for you, okay? So, but before I start even looking at this audio and start manipulating it further if I want to, you have to do something here, okay? If you look right here, you'll see this little orange ticker. It looks like a little like play, uh, play button and it has like these three little lines that represent the arrangement view. This is what we call getting back to the arrangement. So Ableton's saying like, look, if you're done in the session view for now, cool. If you want to actually start working the arrangement view, you have to click on this button here. So when I do that, now I can actually start playing around with these clips. And here's the fun thing, guys, is that you can, you can play this back. I can just click over here to play back in the beginning, or I can use the arrow key over here to get back to the beginning of the set. I can hit spacebar or I can hit the play key. Okay. And listen back. And I can expand these clips and see what's happening under the hood. I can play ahead if I want. I can further manipulate these and maybe turn the volumes down over here. Okay. Maybe adjust the panning on some of these. Now, this is, again, this is the weird thing. So, even though these clips are not associated with these clips, okay, however, the track titles are and the track uh, functions are. What do I mean by that? Look, if I turn this one off, go back to the session view, this one is now off, okay? So you're not recording new tracks, you're just recording new audio. All right. And so if I adjust the reverb here, watch, if I go ahead and bring the reverb all the way up on this one, let's go back to the arrangement or session view and you can see it's been turned up here. And if I turn it down, go back, you can see it's been turned down here. Now it does look a little bit different. I realize this, you realize this, but so some things are connected and then some things are not. Okay. And, um, it just, Again, it takes a little while to get used to. So if I rename this clip, all right? And by the way, the key command for that is Command R, or uh, you could right click to rename it. And I just call it drums, okay? And I even right click on it to change its color like this. Okay, change it to this pinkish color. Now hit tab and you see, it's been changed, okay? Um, so the arrangement view, is where you inevitably will end up. Even if you love working in the session view, say you exclusively only work in the session view, inevitably you'll find yourself in the arrangement view if you plan on exporting a project into a full working compositional piece of music. And there's things you can do in the arrangement view, okay, um, that help you figure out what your arrangement's going to be, okay? For example, like, if I'm looking at this view, it's nice that I have the arrangement position, and then over here I have the loop start punch in position, and then over here I have the loop, uh, the region, the punch in region. Like the position, the start time, that's nice when we have it in uh, uh, full measures or bars, and, and then quarter notes, and then 16th notes. That's wonderful, right? But how long is my song? Okay, and not to say you can't see this in the session view, but in the arrangement view, it's nicely laid out. So up here, this is the beat time ruler. And then down here, we actually have the actual real time in real time. So if I look at this recording, I know from zero seconds to almost about a minute, I have worth of, of, of a recording, okay? So let's say you're like, oh, I wish I could maybe re-record this so that this part came in a little bit sooner. The good news is that you don't have to do this in real time. I can literally click on this clip and drag it back. So let's say I want my drums to actually start in the beginning. I can do that. And now I can hit play up here or hit spacebar, and you'll hear the drums right in the beginning. Maybe for whatever reason, let me just give you another hypothetical, hypothetical example. Maybe with the arrangement, I want the horns to come in two bars in, okay? Two bars in, and now I can come up here and hit play. 
Now see, it started from there. So I'm gonna use the, this arrow key right here to uh, get back. This is the, uh, the, the preview locator. So I can actually bring it back to the beginning. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. So now it's just these drums. And now the horns. And now the rum Roomba shaker. <laughs> 